Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to my recap of Season 2, Episode 10 of Queen Sugar. Our favorite auntie is at work. Ralph Angel comes in and he says that she's looking a lot better, which she is. We still don't know what's going on with Aunt Vi. She gives Ralph Angel some information she picked up at church about marital counseling. Ralph Angel and Darla are engaged. They just had an engagement party. This is something they should seriously consider doing. I think everybody that gets married needs to get some counseling. And not because it's crazy. You just need to, you know, know what you're getting into and make sure you've covered all the bases. He departs and Vi gets another guest, an unexpected guest. He is the owner of a chain of local supermarkets and he would like Vi to supply her pies to his establishment to the tune of 50,000 American US dollars. He wants 250 pies a week. That's a lot of pie. Charlie's hanging out at the house when her mother rolls in with a new pillow. Charlie's not in a good mood. She's worried about her business plan. So much of what she was doing with the mill was based on the land that she thought she owned that her father had left her when he passed. As we found out at the beginning of this season, Ernest left all that land to Ralph Angel and nothing to the girls. So Charlie needs to come up with a new business plan for this mill. Her mother says she'll take care of it. She's on it. She goes by Charlie's office later and she's going through the paperwork. And who would arrive at the office than Aunt Vi? I was expecting very much a showdown, a lot of Lady May level shade. It didn't go to blows, which I never expected. I just thought like a little higher level shade. They kept it cute-ish, not fully cute. Nova's setting up some kind of table for a workshop that she's doing. She's outdoors when her bestie rolls up. Remember the girl who had the babies on her own earlier in the season? That's who rolls up. They're doing a quick catch up when Dr. Dubois rolls up, carrying some big old cases of water like it's nothing. Just broad, strong back. So he goes on about his way and her bestie, that's me. She was like, how is it? Because she could see from the chemistry that they knocking each other down. Remember Lisa Nicole Carson in Love Jones? And Dina was like, it spoke to me. Without missing a beat, Josie was like, what is that? I want to know the details. Tell me the details, girl. But the friend sees with Nova and Robert that everyone else sees whenever they're around each other. She sees they have a good thing. They have amazing chemistry. And she tells Nova on no uncertain terms. Like, girl, he's a unicorn. Don't mess this shit up. Darla's at the bridal shop with Charlie not her mother. She comes out in a beautiful gown. She looks like a baby. You know that woman is like 444 years old in real human years. Like she looks like she's 21, but I swear she's in her late 30s. You're a unicorn. Robert's not a unicorn. You're the unicorn. She asked Charlie, do you like the dress? Charlie launches into some long-winded story about her own dress and her mother. And, and I'm like, ma'am, this is very interesting information about you. Thank you for sharing, but you should have reserved it for another time. Because when a woman is trying on her wedding dress, it's about her. And Charlie, you've made it all about you. But somehow, Darla pulls from Charlie's story. She's like, you know what? My mom sounds a lot like your mother. And I'm like, wait, in some alternate universe, could Darla have been Charlie? Darla confesses to Charlie that she's estranged from her parents, that she called them the other day and she hasn't heard back. And Charlie, who can be very clueless sometimes, she's actually keyed in right now. She's like, you know what? You have a family of your own. Ralph Angel is your family. Blue is your family. And once you get married, she was real clear on that, we will be your family. So you're not alone in the world. Like you do have people. I really hope that she and her family can work it out because the girl's clearly in a lot of pain. And I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Ralph Angel ain't really all that reliable. Now I like Ralph Angel. I do. But your boy has some real toxic masculinity masculinity issues that definitely need to be addressed before he's ready to be anybody's husband. So Darla and your fave go to her trailer to pick up her stuff. She's moving her belongings in garbage bags to give you a sense of where Darla is financially. Darla's putting some stuff in the car and she sees the flyer that Aunt Vi gave Ralph Angel for the premarital counseling at church. You know, Darla's in a 12-step program. She thinks this is a great idea. And Ralph Angel was like, nah, I'm not going to talk to no priests who've never been married about marriage. But sir, you also have never been married. So I would suggest that you go speak to someone at some point, somehow, sometime, before you walk yourself down the aisle. And I'm actually really surprised that he doesn't believe in therapy because I would think like the type of guy who doesn't care 
that his high school friend is now a trans man and who doesn't bat an eye about his son playing with a Barbie doll would also be open-minded enough to believe in therapy. But your boy, it all comes to a head in the next scene where Darla is leaving, I guess, the gas station supermarket. And there's a guy who recognizes her from her former life as a prostitute. Ralph Angel overhears the whole thing. He spends the rest of the episode punishing her for his ego. Your ego about to get in the way of a good thing. Ralph Angel laying in the bed but look like he trying to escape. And he finally says, I feel a way about your past. Sir, you knew what her past was when you asked her to marry you. And then he tries to justify his own past. He was like, yeah, like I robbed people and like I, I stuck up convenience stores, but that was because I was trying to do for blue. You was out here tricking just because you wanted drugs. It's different. She's a recovering addict and you're an ex-con. You ain't in no damn position to be judging Darla. And you broke. Young Micah is feeling very grown. Davis is out of town. Micah takes Kiki over to the house. He's like, what do you want to do? Kiki was like, ah! Let me stop you there, bruh. Don't know how you got down in LA, but that's not how we gonna do in Louisiana. I'm a virgin. I intend to stay that way until I'm ready and I'm in love and I am neither right now. Pump all your brakes. And Micah, I'm gonna give this little boy credit because Micah was like, I'm sorry, my bad. I didn't mean to offend you. I didn't even ask if you wanted to be alone with me. I'm good with however you want to move. And if you'd like me to take you home, I'm happy to do that too. That little boy did more to be less date rapey than grown men I've encountered. I love that scene because that's never played out in my entire life. Like I've had to like, no, I said, no, you got to put some bass in your voice. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, why you got to be mean about it? You ain't got to be, because you didn't back the up the first time I said no I don't really obviously he wants to have sex with Kiki but he really just likes Kiki little, little boy sat there and braided her hair and then later in the episode he's like standing in the fridge letting all the cold air out and he's like Kiki this Kiki that Kiki this talking to his mom and his mom had to be like wait are y'all having the teenage sex Another time, Charlie's at the house and her mother waltzes in, as she's prone to do. And Charlie is drinking midday. She's had it with these sugarcane mill owners. She's just over everything. And her mother is like, oh, well, I looked at your business plan and I have tons of ideas. Basically, you need to start working with white people. Her mother says, I didn't raise you to allow barriers to rise in your life. You need to extend the hand, reach across the table, get the green money, ma'am. I'm not mad at her mother's philosophy. I think her mother is unrealistic about what Charlie is up against. Vi's at the house trying to read the contract which she can't see, it's double. I don't know if she's on meds of some sort. I will imagine not because her vision's still double. She's trying to look at the contract when Charlie comes by. Charlie's all in a funk because she's frustrated with her mother and she's frustrated with the sugar cane people. And she was like, I just feel like no one is happy with me right now. Vi was like, ma'am, you're grown. And your son looks to you every day on how to be grown. And when did you start needing people's permission? She gives Charlie a little charge on her back. And then she's like, now come look at this contract real quick. We're going to sell some pies for this 50,000 American US dollars. I'm happy for her. Back at Nova's, our unicorn is leaving. He got to go back home to Atlanta and work. He can't be laid up under Nova forever. He don't want to go. He got to go. He don't want to go. But he gives Nova the key to his house in Atlanta. Nova looks terrified. He leaves and she's standing there with that key like she don't know what to do with it. Girl, you've been, you've been a jump off and you've been a mistress. And I feel like you're a little unfamiliar with how men do when they're interested in a woman. Nova, just, just calm down, be easy. Don't f this up, Nova, don't f it up. So. That is my recap of Queen Sugar Season 2, Episode 10. Let me know what you thought of the episode and let me know what you thought of the recap. In the meantime, please subscribe and I'll catch you next week. Thanks for watching.